Are you a new player to Destiny 2 and have no idea what to do next? It's okay. You're not alone. Destiny is a super deep game with a new player experience that feels like a scavenger hunt. Check out this website, this subreddit, this discord, this YouTube video. Well, maybe that's not a bad thing. But the point is, it's extremely difficult to find the things and what to do next. I've tried to bridge that gap in many of my videos. And even with that, I've gotten a lot of questions on how, once you understand the very basic gameplay, how do you find what to do next in the game? In this video, I'm gonna to try to address some of those questions as well as up some of my info in my recent videos based on changes to Lightfall. Since this is a pretty broad topic, I will leave chapters so you can find what topics you want to dig into further because depending if you're completely new, if you've done new light, if you're a returning player, some things you may not need. So buckle up and once you're done with this video, feel free to check out the various playlists on my channel where I go into much more details on other new and returning player topics. To really be successful at Destiny, you kind of have to have goals in the game. Now, you don't have to, you can just putz around and kill things, but eventually you're gonna get bored and you wanna try new things, but there's so many things, there's so many icons, there's so many vendors like, help, what do I do? In my mind, Destiny 2 is around four main goals that go through the play loop. And those are, first off, you ultimately wanna get loot. Loot is what you get in the game by playing different activities, right? This could be exotics, this could be, you know, cool armor, this could be things that are OP in the current meta. And since the meta changes, that's why you constantly want to play the game season to season to get the different loop that's going to make a difference, that's going to make you feel powerful. Often, to get this loot, depending on what it is, you can obviously play the game and just get whatever drops. But if you have targeted things you want, typically that's going to be done through certain activities. Certain activities drop things to a loot pool. And some of those activities require you first off to be a certain level of power. Anything that's as a value in the game for the most part has to be done by getting up to a certain power level and being able to go through certain activities. Now, you can do seasonal activities and get high powered um, armor and things like that in certain guns, but the best guns, the best potential armor drops in the game require you to get to a certain level of power. And we'll talk about later in the video how you get up to that power. Part of getting up that power is also XP. XP is what you get by just playing the game. But there are better strategies on how you can get that XP. So you get the XP to get to the power to then get the loot. Once you get the loot, you're going to want to do things like masterwork it, or you want to craft guns, or you want to do things with your armor or your weapons, and all that requires materials. The materials, again, you get through a variety of activities, which I'll talk about here a little bit later in the video. But again, that's the core loop. And to do that, week to week can be very confusing. How do I prioritize? How do I determine what things are the things that I want to do? Because there's all these icons, there's all these things blinking at me. There's all this stuff on different planets and I have no earthly idea where to start. One thing to understand when you talk about Destiny is each week is a life in Destiny. You have a reset that happens on Tuesday. When that reset happens on Tuesday, a lot of things are going to change in the game and your opportunities to get different loot, different upgrades are going to change. One thing I would recommend is a seasonal activity. Play that every week at Tuesday Reset. You'll get seasonal challenge XP as well as rewards from the seasonal vendor. All vendors are reset rotations, so play mods will change as well as primary dungeon raids for the week. So basically, every week on Tuesday, you're gonna have the opportunity to play through new things in the season and also new dungeons and new raids that offer different types of loot. That's also usually the best time to help LFG groups for help, whether you're on mic or off mic. Because people, especially higher level people, are really going to go hard and get those things. And they're probably willing at that point to carry someone to get it. Some people aren't. But for the most part, the people that are, are willing to carry you through activities. So if you want to learn, I've known, for instance, when I'm working on Grandmaster Nightfalls and things like that, going early in the week, I learned tons, even when I'm off mic, tons of ways of doing Nightfalls, Grandmasters, that I never thought about doing because I see players who are really good that learn different cheeses or different techniques for doing those things in optimal because that's what they want to do. They're trying to grind for the loot. Next on Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how much you want to play the game, grind out what helps you on your goals. If you're hunting seasonal guns, play hard to the seasonal play loop of upgrading the helm through objectives to get unlocks. If you're looking for materials, hit up Vanguard Ops and Nightfall's hard. Those are great ways to get materials. If you're looking to power up, then really go in hard to the weekly challenges on each mode to go after the powerful and pinnacle cap. If you're just learning to casually gain XP 
play public events, play bounties on the EDZ moon, or the latest DLC planet, depending on what you own. Once you get to Friday, that's when Zero show up. Zero will allow you to get some high roll stat gear, also allow you to get exotics. So things that you don't have in your loot pool will be available to you. Also, Trials comes out on Friday, most weeks, and lasts until reset. And if you're into high-end PvP, this is basically the array version of PvP. It also allows you to get some really, really cool weapons and armor, as well as it is basically the raid version of PvP. It's end game. So keep that in mind. But the good thing about it is if you do it on weeks where a lot of people are looking for particular weapons, you'll have a larger pool. And so even for average players, you can typically get, get in a few wins here or there. Over the weekend is when most people will have the time because they're off work or they're, you know, they're not with their families to dig into more difficult content and spend the time to do fire teams or LFGs. So if you're looking to do raids and dungeons, this is the best time to do that. There are frequently new player friendly posts on various LFG groups that you'll need to look into for them. Avoid groups with titles like KWTD, which is know what to do, or checking stats and be clear you're a new player. And also do yourself a favor, watch a few videos so you at least are educated on how to get into those activities. Monday is then a good chance to wrap up anything you missed during the week that you want to finish up and that starts the loop into Tuesday. So that's really how Destiny plays. It's basically, think about it as a week at a time. Instead of trying to figure out everything you need to do, think about your initial goals, how they fit into this week, and then play it at the pace you want to. Some people get overwhelmed with Destiny because they try to get everything if you're a completionist. I do a lot of that, but I also know my limits. And one of the things with Destiny is you need to know when you're playing too much, or, and when you're enjoying it. Go into the things that you enjoy, make specific goals and things, or if you're not a Gorian person, just play casually, but then don't get frustrated when you don't get the things you want. Keep doing that, making your goals week over week, and if you do that, you'll find very quickly you'll be able to get the things you want without being overwhelmed about what all these icons, you can't possibly do everything in the game. Do the things you like, go into them hard, and get the rewards you're looking for in the game. As you're trying to achieve these goals within Destiny, there's a couple things that will help you. There's a Destiny Optimizer site. This site is really great because it'll show you all the pinnacle and powerful rewards you have in a week. So if you're looking, for instance, to decide, like, what do I need to do next to power up my character? And what am I missing? Like, are my leg armor too short? Or, you know, does it not have enough power? What drops do I need? This is a good way to do that. In addition, if you're trying to collect all the cool looking things in the game, Destiny Sets is a great way to do that. It'll show you what things you have and what things you're missing if you're trying to collect like the armor from a particular season or from a particular activity or if you're missing particular weapons. This will show you if you're a completionist. There's also the site Braytech.org. Braytech.org, first off, is a great place if you're a triumph seeker. If you're trying to figure out where the triumphs are missing and which ones do you need to do before they go away in a certain season, this is a great place to look. It also has maps that allow you to see where collectibles or things within the game. It has a lot of great things. It's sort of a Swiss Army knife of Destiny sites. This is a great place to check out. And then obviously one site you can check out is the 100.io. This is a great place if you're struggling with discords or if LFG within the Bungie app to find things, to find people to play. This is a great place for not only finding a clan, but also find games, LFG games you can get into. And there are a lot of new player friendly games within there. And then finally, there's a ton of other sites, but one of the other ones I would talk about is Destiny Item Manager or called Dim. This is a great place for looking at your armor, looking at your weapons. You can do lots of searches with keywords to look for things that maybe only have like disorienting grenades or other, you know, that are aggressive frame this or, you know, rapid fire this or arc or solar. You can do lots of searches to find the best armor weapons that you have on you. You can also use this as something to make builds, which you can do in the game too, but you can also edit those offline in there. And then you can share them with your friends. So that's a really great site. Lost Sectors. Lost Sectors have always been in Destiny 2, but what they've done more recently is they've done Legend and Master Lost Sectors. So again, just like I talked about in the PvE section earlier, these are power capped activities. And if you do them solo, you actually get a chance at obtaining exclusive exotic armor and some of it's some of the most powerful exotic armor in the game you have to do it solo and again one of the things that's nice about it is while it can be a little bit of a grind it's a guaranteed grind if you do it enough you're going to get those drops where other exotic armor it may take you randomly or waiting for Zer to get it every week so strikes have always been a part of destiny 2 and again it they're, they're still in the game some of the changes are obviously you have your main vanguard strikes and these are not power capped or anything 
So this is just for, you know, going in, maybe getting some kills, doing bounties, things like that. You also have Nightfall, and they've standardized Nightfall, which again, they have Adept, Hero, Legend, Master, and Grandmaster. And again, some of those give you power pinnacle rewards and give you additional materials that are and exotics that can drop out as rewards. So again, they also have champions added, again, depending on what level you are. So Nightfalls and Strikes, especially Nightfalls, are probably some of the most repeatable ways to get high-end gear and high-stat gear, as well as exotics in the game. So Gambit, if you haven't played Gambit before, Gambit is a combo PvP and PvE activity. In the PvE activity, you're going around killing things and getting moats, which you deposit in the bank. That bank allows you to send blockers to the other side, which can block their bank. And over time, it can actually drain the moats that they've deposited. You're both racing to get to 100 moats, and when you do that, a boss shows up. When the boss shows up, you have to go to different areas within the map, and you'll have these primevals show up. Killing those primevals will continue to increase a, de a buff that will allow you to increase damage to the boss. Now, all this would be simple, except there's a PvP component. You can invade, which allows you to go to the other side and kill enemies. When you kill enemies, you can drop their moats, and during the primeval phase, the boss phase, you can actually heal the primeval by killing people. So again, there's a lot of balance between the PvE portion and when you invade, and so there's some strategy mechanics. Gambit's, some people don't like it. I actually think it's a fun mode. For those who played Gambit in the past, what they did is they basically took Gambit Prime away, and they kind of took the best of Gambit Prime and combined it with the best of normal Gambit, and that's the Gambit mode we have today. So PvP has changed a, quite a bit in Destiny. So originally PvP was a four, play, four and four player match. Now you have modes that are six on six. Those are your general, not power level enabled, just going in and having fun modes. You have three on three modes, which a lot of those are based around the co competitive playlist. In the competitive playlist, that's a ranked playlist where you level up and you use skill-based matchmaking to determine who you're gonna play against. And there are titles and rewards around that, so that's why some people may get into that. The ultimate version of that is Trials of Osiris, which is a reboot of Trials from Destiny 1. And this, again, it comes basically every week, and it's an end game sort of mode for PvP, where, again, you can get access to really high-end rewards as far as, well, first off, they have cosmetics, armor, things like that, but also certain weapons that you can only get only within trials there's also iron banner that's typically run twice a season and iron banner is again there's a title involved with it you can get special gear that looks kind of cool there's special guns sometimes but it's also it's also surrounded around some of the same competitive modes and the other big change that happened is they have changed it from being power enabled so anyone can get in there you don't have to worry about power level Dungeons are endgame PvE activities that are, are surrounded versus raids where it's six people, it's three people, and you can even solo them, right? It's a little more difficult, but you can, and there's some achievements around that. But they're three player activities that's a little easier to get a fire team together to play. Typically, they have a few bosses, one at the end, somewhere in the middle, they have a jumping puzzle, they'll have a couple puzzles um, within them. And the pattern right now is they're doing two of those a year. So again, there's a ton of great dungeons within the game check them out again they also have exclusive weapons and some of those are some of the best weapons in the game so if you're into pv activities if you haven't gotten yourself ready for a raid and you want to try something out that's maybe a little simpler kind of between a raid and like strikes this would be a good activity for you to try they're a lot of fun obviously raids raids are some of the most important and critical things within destiny 2 they're the end game pv content and so for Destiny 2, they are slowly bringing back and reprising raids from Destiny 1. So they've done Vault of Glass, they've done King's Fall, they'll probably do Wrath of Machine at some point. There are some raids that have been taken out, like Leviathan. So again, raids are about, if you haven't played them before, raids are about mechanics. In other words, puzzles, things like that. You typically a jumping puzzle. And also figure out how to do the best boss DPS because there's typically multiple bosses within a raid activity. These are not these are activities that you need to find a fire team. You need to be on mic, and you're gonna they require six people. You can do it with less. There people have done that, but obviously that's more difficult. One of the other advantages of raids is that they usually have an exotic that's usually one of the best exotics out of that season, and usually it'll get nerfed at some point. So you want to get in and get in as quickly as possible. That's the video, guys. Hopefully it was really helpful for you. Again, 
Destiny 2 is a very complicated game, lots of different systems, so it's very confusing what to do every week. Hopefully this gives you a good overview. If once you get through this video you want to learn more about a specific topic, I have tons of beginner, intermediate, and advanced guides for all of you part-time guardians out there who are trying to get better at Destiny 2. Again, if you like the video, if you like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.